Society. I'm delighted to be joined by Hume at Fall, lecturer in law, a member of our Citizenship and Governance Strategic Research Area, and one of the pioneers of a very interesting project at the Open University called Open Justice. And, and the question for us is, can you have a just society without legal aid? Well, thanks Simon. It's great to be here. And I think the um, question is an important one, especially given the uh, cuts that we've had to, mm. to, to legal aid um, and uh, many people in the legal profession and in wider civil society are concerned about whether uh, we can afford or have access to justice without a properly funded legal aid system. So I think um, viewers would be interested to know that um, uh, an important piece of legislation came out in 2012 um, known as LASPO which did have a um, uh, an I uh, impact on the amount of money the state would give to um, lawyers and legal advice agencies to support the provision of free legal advice and representation. So it's important to be clear that you know, legal aid still very much exists, mm -hmm. very much uh, present in, in, in the criminal law and in certain civil law issues, but the, the, the number of uh, range of cases and the types of people who can qualify le for legal aid has been restricted and the overall bu budget has been cut. You know, and you might take a political view about whether that's a good thing or not. Yeah, well, let, let's take that view then. That couldn't you say lawyers are paid a fortune. Why should taxpayers subsidise lawyers yeah. to argue cases against the government who are also funded by the taxpayers? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a, it's a good point. I mean, um, some research done last year looking at the hourly rates of uh, solicitors, partners in, in big city law firms in London, and, uh, and you know these, these fees are eye-watering. You're getting average rates of £1,000 uh, per hour in some um, big big city law Gosh. firms. Um, now, to put that in context, that is uh, people engage often in kind of commercial corporate um, law work for large uh, corporations working on huge cases worth uh, millions and millions of pounds. Um, but w w th these, are, these are areas where legal aid uh, is n has never, never gone. So right. there are lawyers making a lot of money and in the past uh, some lawyers made uh, um, a good deal of money out of legal aid but I think it's fair to say that those days are gone in relation to, to legal aid. And when you talk to people in um, uh, who have legal aid practices, say for example at the criminal bar, especially mm -hmm. at the junior bar, um, people are struggling to um, make a go of it in terms of ma making a living. But what, really what, where, where there's a problem I think in terms of us thinking about a just society yes. is, is whether people can get the advice and the representation that they need. Now take for example the, um, the events surrounding the Grenfell fire. Mm -hmm. um, what you have there is a situation where people um, who are in need of perhaps legal advice around their tenancies, um, getting rehousing and stuff, mm -hmm. there is a limit now to the number of uh, uh, lawyers who can afford to provide uh, free legal advice and um, some people are concerned about legal advice deserts. Yeah. So yes there are some lawyers in the commercial sector who are still making an awful lot of money but what, what the concern is is are the people in um, the areas w w working in social security law, kind of housing yeah. law, are there enough people um, being able to offer free advice but there? It was a very good example, but didn't the Law Society intervene and say, actually there is a neighbourhood law centre in North Kensington who's yeah. been doing good work yeah. and we don't want firms coming in to exploit this? No, that's right. Well, I think it, you know what we're talking about is whether there's provision for people who are in need and who mm. can't afford to instruct a lawyer yeah. um, to get the advice that they need. And I think um, one of the key pillars of our democratic society is the rule of law. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that those in power have to uh, uh, abide by legal rules. Um, yeah. And that's such a fundamental provision, it's almost difficult to appreciate it unless you actually think about what life would be like if people could arbitrarily decide you know, to take your house from you or to, to move you on from, from, from the house that you're living in or something like that. Now, access to just rule of law, therefore, depends upon people being able to access the courts who yeah. are the arbiters of, of the rule of law. So, so let's suppose that I object to uh, Brexit mm. and I want to challenge what the government's doing about mm. it. Should I get legal aid for that or can't I just ask the bar bar barristers to do it for free well, or is there another opportunity of doing it? Well, that's a r really good uh, point because um, there are some barristers and there is a uh, tradition within the legal profession to work pro bono, so to work for the public good. So some cases are taken on a pro bono basis and one of our colleagues here at the Open University um, has taken pro bono cases from 
um, jurisdictions in Jamaica, people on, are, are involved in criminal cases there. So that's a, a good example. But uh, back, going back to Brexit, the mm. uh, Gina Miller case, yes. and you remember G Gina Miller was one of the uh, applicants in the review of the power of the government to withdraw, to sign mm. the uh, Article 50 declaration without first going to Parliament. That was a big case around Christmas time. You remember the Daily Mail did the famous Enemies of the People mm -hmm. headline. Mm -hmm. um, and what we had there is a situation where um, the case was funded by uh, essentially crowdfunding. So people uh, put uh, money in using social media to support the uh, legal action to get uh, that matter heard before the courts. And, and this is something that's uh, increasingly uh, the, the case that certain issues of kind of general public importance can be funded by uh, campaigners through crowdfunding. So we've seen as well um, the um, uh, as a response to the um, coalition between mm -hmm. Um, the Tory party and the, the DUP. The deal with the DUP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a, um, uh, a crowdfunding case going on at the moment regarding whether that amounts to uh, a breach of the Bribery Act or even a breach of the Good Friday Agreement. So th there are uh, other, I mean, I think technology is allowing the, but us But the to cynics would say, yeah. at the end of, the, say, that case, mm. let's suppose the applicants lose. Yeah. What's happened is the barristers have been paid mm. by other people. Now, it might in this case be the public, mm. but if it was legal aid, it would be the, the taxpayer. Mm. Why don't the barristers just do it for free? Well, uh, the, some barristers do work for free in the sense that there is this uh, tradition of pro bono, um, but uh, I think it's perhaps unrealistic to think that all lawyers would work for free all the time. Um, and um, there is a wider question of how um, the level of which people are, are paid. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Yeah. BBC presenters are in the news, yeah. and yeah. some of the men are saying, well, we'd be delighted if the women got paid as much. Yeah. And, and then some of the critical public are saying, well, wh why don't you get less pay yeah. and give that to those who are doing the same job as you? Mm. So with the lawyers, could we agree on, if you like, the price of a just society? That not a thousand pounds an hour, but I don't know, 50 pounds an hour, 100 pounds an hour or whatever. W would that be fair? Well, the, the, the legal aid system does to an extent um, give fixed prices for certain mm -hmm. uh, types of legal representation and legal work, you know, mm. a number of days in a trial, yeah. some time to prepare and so on. But um, effectively, in the in the you know we live in a market society, and I suppose mm. going back to the BBC presenters or mm. the you know footballers and so on, yes. if you've got you've got a particular pa talent in a particular area, mm. then you can command um, a higher price. So a particularly talented barrister mm. who's a very good advocate yeah. might be able to charge a, a, a higher price from a, a client who can afford uh, to pay. So. I mean, this raises bigger questions about yes. inequalities in pay that you know uh, point to a wider discussion, which I'm sure you've been having during this series about what amounts to a just society in terms of the distribution yeah. Of, yeah. of resources and the levels of taxation. Well, in terms of citizenship, which is a central part of our strategic research area, let's take the example of uh, asylum seekers. Yeah. And it's not some uh, rich commercial barrister who's, who's helping them, it's a young uh, solicitor somewhere around the UK and she's interviewing the asylum seeker and then probably really getting caught up in the case mm. and championing this and so on. Now that person isn't being paid a fortune from mm. legal aid, are they? No. And we do want, or you and I, I guess, want those asylum seekers to be represented. Yeah, if we care about the rule of law, which mm. means that um, uh, you know, if there is a, a, an issue, a legal issue, it should be resolved fairly and impartially and if it does need to go to court, um, part of that means um, that the that the people involved in the case need to be properly understand their their legal rights and their legal position. Right. And given how complex the law can be, it's unrealistic to expect, um, for example, an asylum seeker to be able to navigate their own way through the court system. Of course, you know, it's, to make it clear, there, there is no bar to representing yourself at, co yep. at court. You you know, you are able to um, speak to the judge if you're a litigant in the case. Um, so you can represent yourself, but the problem with that is that it's, there's not um, that many people who have the um, background knowledge to, um, when the, you're in a high stake setting such as an asylum case, you'd, you'd want to make sure you were putting the case in the right way, that you'd not forgotten key points of law. Um, and so in this the situation you're talking yeah. about, about the, the legal aid solicitor, that we do need to make sure that there's a baseline level of uh, access to the courts. And yes. Access to the courts doesn't just mean being able to get there, but to have the advice to be able to make your case properly. Uh, you sound like a social crusader <laughs> for a just society, yeah. and that's why you're both an academic lawyer 
and at Yeoken University, yeah. or is that too pious a way of looking at it? Well, I think uh, you know whether it's uh, there are a number of reasons why you know I've chosen to work here, but I think the the social justice mission of the Open University is something that I'm, I'm proud of, and I th still think it's something that uh, informs what people do at the at the university. Mm. And uh, you know, we were conceived as an institution to provide increased opportunity for. Um, for, 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 for people who would not otherwise be able to access higher education and what we've done um, in the law school is to try and integrate that into the way we teach law mm. and uh, our, our, we have a new project that's uh, fully launching in the autumn called Open Justice which will allow students to engage in some of these issues about access to justice um, and to um, really think about how uh, we as a law school can s um, serve the public good by reaching out to, to people who might need uh, support or um, would benefit from uh, having a better understanding of legal principles. Uh, that sounds great. We we'll look forward to that. I, I guess that will be the, the rerun, the yeah. next series yeah, of, yeah. of, yeah, that'd of, be good. of I'd these, to come these back chats. That would yeah. be really good. Yeah. Just a, a last way of looking at it, you mentioned Grenfell mm. and I think it is important for students on, on, on these Facebook live chats to take whatever is in the news and mm. to think about it. Is it the case that if one of those tenants complaints over the last five years, or so, if, if, if somebody had had a lawyer who was funded by the public purse and had really pursued it, we might have stopped that kind of disaster. Is that the best way of looking at it? Well, it's conceivable. I mean, uh, you know, I suppose it's too early to, we still don't know fully the cause of, of mm. what happened. But in principle, yes. I mean, if, if um, you've got people who uh, in Grenfell Tower who were, you know, fairly vulnerable really in terms of um, their ability to instruct pro proper le legal advice, they did have issues, concerns about the safety of the building um, in advance of the fire. And it seems from what I've read that not all of those concerns were listened to. And I think if you put on top of that the, um, the difficulty in getting good legal advice, especially in areas to do with legal aid practice such as social housing, um, which isn't an area where you're going to go and earn huge mm. amounts of money, then um, I think these two things together do uh, raise some uncomfortable questions. Hugh McFall, thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you to everybody who's been following our series of discussions about how we can make a just society. Thanks. Thanks.